I'm First Sergeant James DeGeorge with the 117th Space Battalion, Colorado Army National Guard, and I'm here with Mr. J um, John Bell. With the, he's a reenactor with the 10th Cavalry Buffalo Soldiers. Uh, Mr. Bell, thank you for taking the time to meet with us today. And could you start off by telling us a little bit about your uniform that you're wearing today? All right, I'm dressed in the uniform of the United States Army. Cavalry of the 1870s and the 1880s. My tunic is dark blue. My trousers are sky blue because that's what the United States government says they are. And of course, if the government says they're sky blue, they're sky blue. I wear high boots on my legs. That tells you that I'm cavalry and I ride a horse everywhere I go. My hat is black, not white. That white hat was created by John Ford for John Wayne and not the United States Cavalry. My bandana around my neck can be any color. Blue, red, yellow, or whatever. The bandana was purchased by the soldiers at the local sutler store. They were not issued by the United States government. I have high gloves called gauntlets, long gloves. These gauntlets protected my hands when I shot a black powder weapon so the powder would not burn my hands. And I've been doing this Buffalo Soldier Unit and the Buffalo Soldier story for about 36 years. We travel all over the United States. We're a mounted unit. Any other questions that you might have? Well, I, I'm noticing looking at your uniform here, uh, be, doing living history myself, you've got the yellow piping and the yellow ranks on there. Um, you talk about your, your rank there, and I know the yellow, the yellow piping is always a sign of the cavalry. And I'm noticing that your uh, trousers there are also reinforced. Uh, for long days in the saddle. So, yeah, if you could speak just a little bit about your, your well, right the, the, you know, the riding seat is always reinforced <laughs> because we're mounted, and that's the first thing that wears out. And you can always tell how long a guy was in the Army by the color of the flower bags that he had between his legs because when the war wore out, they had flower bags that would make up the reinforcement on their leg. I'm cavalry. My stripes say that I'm a regimental quartermaster sergeant. There is one regimental quartermaster sergeant in the whole regiment, and his job is all of the equipment during this time period. And it's regimental equipment. There are many sergeants underneath him. This is the same rank as a sergeant major, but in different areas. They work, have the same pay, and it's just a line, a line rank. You have sergeants, you have corporals, you have privates. The privates made $13 a month. Sergeant made $15 a month. And then when he became a first sergeant, he made $16 a month. And a regimental sergeant or sergeant major made $17 a month during that time period. Well, I, I'm glad to say that first sergeants in today's army make a little more <laughs> than that. And I'm sure my wife's also thankful for that. Well, since you're the uh, regimental quartermaster sergeant, um, let's talk about some of the equi uh, some of the equipment that we have here uh, right. today. Well, we I'd like to start off, since we are the 10th Cavalry and we are the Buffalo Soldiers, we have a Buffalo Soldier head on the wall that kind of signifies the symbol of our unit. 
And we have a buffalo soldier coat over here. And they wore that through the winter in Montana. And that's one of the ways that they got their name. When the Native Americans saw them riding through the snow, bent over their horses, they looked like buffalo coming through the snow. And that's one way they got their name. The other way is that the buffalo, if you look at the buffalo again, the horns and the hair between the horn looks like the hair on the black soldier's head. But I can't show you because I don't have any hair. And the third thing that they sometimes say is that they were given the name Buffalo because the souls were kind of fierce fighters. They didn't really have a name. And so they sometimes acted like the Buffalo that they prized, Native Americans prized. And so in respect for their fighting ability, not necessarily for the respect for the man, because their fighting ability, they gave them the name Buffalo Soldier. So it was a, a term of reverence for, the term of reverence for, their, for their skills and for abilities. Their skills. Not, not something that they didn't necessarily like them. So talking about that, that westward expansion and readdressing um, the, the westward movement of it, uh, Colorado played a key role in that. And where were the Buffalo Soldiers um, dealing with the Colorado Territory as Colorado became a state in 1876? Well, they were all over Colorado. They, of course, they had a Fort D.A. Russell is right on the Colorado border. Okay. And so it's in, in Cheyenne. So the ones, the soldiers from D.A. Russell kind of took care of the northern part of Colorado. And then there were, there were Buffalo soldiers at Fort Logan. There were Buffalo soldiers at Fort Garland. There were Buffalo soldiers at Pagosa Springs. There were Buffalo soldiers in the Durango. And they had four or five units that had to take care of the whole state. And when there was a problem, they had soldiers from whatever part of the state they needed to come to reinforce the others, plus soldiers that came out of Wyoming to help re reinforce the soldiers that were in Colorado. So they were mainly in Fort Garland, Fort Logan, Fort Lewis, Pagosa Springs. And so uh, finishing up here, is there anything um, that you think, and I know you've got years of his historical knowledge, that you know, people have lost sight of in this day and age that, that really ties back to the Buffalo Soldiers that, that you think people should know? Well, I think that one thing that they should know is that without the Buffalo Soldiers in Colorado, a lot of people would not be here today because of their job to help subdue the Native Americans that were out here in the West. They were all over the West. They were the only law enforcement they had out here for a particular time. They took care of everyone. If the, if the people in the, in the towns had a problem, they went to the Army. And the Army were Buffalo soldiers, black soldiers commanded by white officers. And I don't sometimes think that the officers of the Buffalo soldiers really got enough credit for what they did. Guy V. Henry, who served with the Buffalo Soldiers, felt that if he had to make serve with these soldiers, he wanted to make sure that they were excellent shots. So he trained them to be marksmen. Ninety percent of the Buffalo Soldiers were expert marksmen because of Guy V. Henry, Captain Guy V. Henry. And he did such a great job training the Buffalo Soldiers that they pulled him out of the Buffalo Soldier units and he trained all of the troops in the United States Army. Captain Gabby Henry became a general after that. Mr. Bell, I just, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Uh, this is a phenomenal, uh, I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you do as a living historian and uh, the links that you go to to preserve and make sure that this history isn't forgotten, that we don't lose these parts of our past. Once again, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you.